Well, here we have the car that arguably started the muscle car craze in the 1960s. This is the 1964 Pontiac GTO, the first year of the GTO, when it was offered just as an option package on the Tempest, which, by the way, was true for 1964 and 1965 model years. This is a GTO hardtop coupe. They offered three models in 1964. The hardtop coupe, which this is, of which they made 18,400, a sport coupe, which is a pillared coupe, of which they made 7,400 units, and the convertible, of which they made 6,600 units. Base price on these GTOs was about $3,200, but you could easily option the car up and have the sticker top $4,000. The cool thing about the GTO in 1964 was that it came standard with Pontiac's big 389-cubic-inch V8, and this really just skirted around GM's regulations that said A-body cars or cars this size couldn't have engines that were larger than 330 cubic inches. But Pontiac General Manager Pete Estes at the time, who would later become GM's president, simply disregarded that. And I believe there was actually even a loophole in the policy that allowed for larger engines if they were optional. And because, remember, the GTO was an option package on the Tempest, it was kind of allowed, shall we say. This is a beautiful 64 GTO finished in black exterior paint with a red vinyl interior, and it's absolutely stunning. When you got the GTO, not only did you get the 389 with the Carter AFB four barrel under hood that made 325 horsepower in that four barrel form, optional you could get, which this car has, the Tri Power 389 that made 348 horsepower. So it had quite a bit of scoot here. For transmissions, you could get the standard three-speed manual, four-speed manual in wide and close ratios, or the Super Turbine 300 two-speed automatic transmission that was kind of a slush box, but eh, it was an automatic if you wanted an automatic. In terms of some strange things and idiosyncrasies, Motor Trend tested a 1964 Pontiac GTO, and they found that it went 0 to 60 in about 7.7 .7 seconds, did the quarter mile, and around 16 seconds or so. And Car and Driver famously tested the GTO versus a Ferrari GTO, and they had the car going from 0 to 100 in a little under 12 seconds, which clearly is much faster than the Motor Trend car. How was this? Well, take a look here at this engine that's under hood, and this is a Pontiac 389, but the vehicles that were supplied to Car and Driver were not equipped with 389 cubic inch V8s. They were instead equipped with some hot-rotted 421 cubic inch V8s that had been souped up by Ace Wilson's Royal Pontiac in Royal Oak, Michigan. So a lot bigger engine with hotter cams. And how did Pontiac Motor Division get away with that? And how did Car and Driver not recognize it? Well, one interesting thing about Pontiac V8s, at least the ones that displace 326 to 455 cubic inches, is that they are all the exact same physical size. There isn't really a small or big block Pontiac V8 until you get into the early 1980s, late 70s, and then you have the Pontiac 265 and 301 cubic inch V8s, which have a smaller deck height than the other 326 to 455 cubic inch Pontiac V8s. So if you pop the hood on one of those Pontiacs that car and driver tested, the engine wouldn't look any different than if it were a 389. And I guess car and driver didn't know about reading the code on Pontiac V8s. Most of the V8s, you can decode them by looking at the letter code on the passenger side uh, cylinder block just beneath the cylinder head. Now, in addition to the large V8, for $295, which was the option cost of the GTO option package back then, or about $2,500 today, you got these red line tires, you got dual exhausts, also chrome valve covers, copious amounts of GTO badging all throughout the exterior and interior of the vehicle, stiffer springs, a number of things in general that just made the car a better handler and more sporty, if you will, over the typical Tempest. So really was a pretty good option package. And of course, you got some, as Mark would call it, hood scoopery on the hood, those two hood scoops. 
on the 1964 GTO that gave it its distinct look and quite a few little interior bits like its own seat stitching pattern as well as an engine turn dash. Returning back to the exterior, you can see a number of those GTO badges, one behind the front tire there and another on the back quarter panel. So it was a pretty good value for the time. And while the 64 GTO is certainly a looker, it really didn't take off in popularity until the 1965 model year. In total, Pontiac sold about 31, 32,000 GTOs for 1964. But by 1965, that figure had more than doubled. So this was really the beginning of the GTO, and it would continue on until 1974 when the GTO would be sunset in a rather unceremonious way by being a trim package on a Ventura. Not a great way for a nameplate to end, at least temporarily, until the GTO name would come back in the early 2000s. Let's take a look under hood one more time, and you can see that this car is equipped with the Tri-Power V8, the 348 horsepower V8. This has the mechanical linkage, not vacuum-operated outer carburetors, so the more you step on it, the more carburation you get. It also has power steering and power brakes. You can see the power steering pump there, as well as the power brake booster and the single master cylinder. And one thing that came standard with the GTOs, you can kind of see it here, is that declutching fan and I believe it's seven blades, so it's a pretty heavy-duty cooling system, despite the fact that this car does not have air conditioning. It effectively has the air conditioning heavy-duty cooling radiator fan. Those declutching fans did end up giving probably about eh, 5 to 10 horsepower at higher RPMs versus the standard bladed fans. The GT also had a unique styling element, and that is these lower feature lines that you can see here one at the top and one on the bottom of the door that would be used as the inspiration for similar lines on the Oldsmobile Tornado. Of course, the Tornado took the feature line over the wheels and its identifying feature was the pronounced wheel arches and flares. But the start for the inspiration of that was actually what you see here on this particular A-body. And apparently GM styling chief Bill Mitchell at the time called that the frame and he used that frame and liked it so much that he directed his Oldsmobile styling team to use it on the Tornado. Let's listen to former Oldsmobile junior designer Dick Ruzzin describe how this particular line on the Tempest set up a similar line on the 1966 Tornado. Bill Mitchell had liked very much a Pontiac A-body with two lines. and I think it went into production, or two lines. 64? Yeah, okay. Okay, it had two lines. And Mitchell saw it as a frame. He called it the frame. He really liked it. It was one of the things in the building at that time that he most admired. So Dave put the two lines on uh, the drawing that he was doing that would become the red rendering. And Stan said, well, I don't want to, we don't want to be close to that Pontiac. So take the lower line off and take the line over the wheel open. Let's transition now to the interior of this GTO. This particular one has the optional four-spoke steering wheel and the center console. The 64 GTO came with this really cool engine-turned dash that was part of the GTO package. And you can see a beautiful red vinyl interior on this particular car. It's also equipped with the optional four-speed manual transmission. Notice the ignition key is off on the left-hand side there right near the door, as opposed to being in the normal location, kind of on the passenger side somewhere. And you can see, taking a look around the interior, that you got these handsome seats, and perhaps it's even made more handsome by just the color in this particular vehicle. But nonetheless, good door trim, very handsome. And one strange thing about the dash on these is that there's a turn signal indicator, but it doesn't indicate what direction in which you're turning. It's just a single light. It's in the middle of the dash there, just to the right of the speedometer pod. You can see it's kind of an oval shape. That's the turn signal indicator that blinks in that location, no matter if you have the right or left turn signal on. I always thought that was a bit strange, but I suppose if you selected the turn signal in a particular direction, you knew which direction that was, and you just wanted to make sure that it was operating satisfactorily. The circular light above it is the bright light indicator on these GTOs.
Overall, a super handsome interior, that four-spoke steering wheel would only be offered in 1964. In 1965, the GTOs would get different steering wheels, and the sports steering wheel would be a three-spoke design. And while we have the picture up here, you can see that in 1965, the engine turning on the dash went away in favor of a faux wood grain, and the passenger also got a grab handle above the glove box. Of course, the door panel design also changed. And there were overall a number of changes for 1965 to the exterior styling as well as under hood. The engine's got a bit more power, but we'll talk about that in more detail in a subsequent video. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the 1964 Pontiac GTO. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails about the bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks for watching.